Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Nader. In this video, we're going to go over sets in JavaScript. In the previous videos, we went over maps, objects, and arrays. Sets are just another data structure that work in a very unique way uh, compared to maps and arrays and objects that allow us to add values that are actually only kept track of if they are unique. So let's see how that's valuable and let's get right into sets. So I'd like to start off this video by going through the documentation. So go ahead and pull up your web browser and pull up Google, and we're going to search for uh, JavaScript sets. So uh, in the search results page, um, you uh, ID will have a lot of results. Uh, I love to go through uh, MDN first if I can, and it's relevant. In this case, it is. Uh, so there's a set object in JavaScript from the Mozilla Developer Network. I'm just going to go ahead and click on that set of documentation, zoom in a little bit for you so you can see a bit better. Um, let's go through the definition really quick, and then we'll get right into some code examples after going through uh, just a few more things on this page. So a set object lets you store unique values of any type, whether those values are primitive values or object references. So like I kind of teased that in the intro, a set works very similar to an array, but it only allows unique values. So if we add the same value twice, only one of them is kept. That, that might seem kind of strange and like, okay, well, why do we need a whole new data structure for this? There's many reasons why sets are used, uh, and there's many cases where, in fact, they are uh, probably the best solution to use for a particular problem. Um, so if we just scroll down a little bit here, we can kind of see uh, some of the instance methods. We can see also that there's an instant property, which we saw with map, where we can grab the size of a set. And this is with a dot size, which we'll see, unlike the length, which is the common way to do it with arrays. Um, but with the methods here, I encourage you to read just through these just so you can kind of get a sense of reading through documentation. A lot of these have some overlap with how they work with maps, uh, and some of these are kind of uh, renamed and, and a bit new. Um, however, they have the same functionality. So we're going to be going through how to add items to a set, how to um, check if a set has an item in it already, uh, and then also how to delete items from a set. Some of these other ones such as uh, the entries and the values or the keys uh, we'll get to when we look at for each uh, loops, or sorry, not for each loops, for of loops um, in a future video, because that's gonna actually be something that we're going to be able to use with both maps uh, as well as sets. Uh, and they're very useful. And in fact, we can actually even use them with things like uh, objects and arrays in certain ways as well. So with that said, let's actually just get right to the code to see how this works in practice. I'm gonna pull up Visual Studio Code. It's just gonna create a new file for us. I'll call this setbasics.js. Uh, and to start, let's just create our first set and very similar to a map, we need to use that new keyword. So I'm going to say const my set to name the variable. And this is going to point at a new set with a capital S just like that and parentheses. So this is calling the set constructor function, which we'll learn more of when we actually see a kind of more advanced functions as well as something called classes. But we do have to have this new keyword when we're using set and maps and we're creating them for the first time to have them be a blank slate to add stuff to or remove stuff from. Okay. So that said, let's see how this works and how it's different from arrays and objects and maps. The first thing we want to do is see how we can add values to this set. So to do that, we can do my set, and then we can do dot add, and then we can uh, give it a value to add. So this is a method on set that allows us to add any value that we want. Let's say that we want to add numbers to the set we can technically mix and match any type of value. Uh, but in this case, I'll just stick with numbers to start. So let's say I want to add the number 10. Okay. Um, and if I do this a few times, maybe I'll add the number uh, 20, 30, and 40. All right. What I'll do is I'll console.log out my set. And let's see what this actually looks like. I'll just pull up my terminal, make sure I'm in the correct folder. And I'm going to use node to run my file right here. So very similar to the map video, we see that node helpfully kind of gives us the fact that this is a set with the actual length or the number or the size of the set inside brackets, which will actually see how we can get that value later using dot size. 
Um, but most interestingly, it looks like we have kind of curly brackets and what looks like an array, right? With map, we saw that there were key value pairs. We had a little arrow notation. That was what, how node represented maps. And with objects, we kind of have the colon with the key and the value. With arrays, uh, we have square brackets. That's really the only difference between a set, it looks like, and a array. Um, so that's kind of interesting, right? Uh, so one thing to keep in mind, we cannot make a set like this. We couldn't just do this. This actually is something totally different in JavaScript. Um, in other languages, sometimes this is used uh, for, for various kinds of meanings. However, in JavaScript, we uh, this means something totally different because these curly brackets are meant and reserved for objects specifically. All right, cool. So now that we have our set, let's see what happens if we try to add a duplicate value. And this is where the actual use of the set really starts to shine. If we try to add another 10 to this, if this was an array, for example, if we pushed a 10 onto this array and it was an array, we would have 10, 20, 30, 40, and then 10, right? Uh, but let's see what happens if we do that with set. So I'll say my set dot add, and I'll say 10. In fact, let me spice it up a little bit. I'll just add three tens. Why not? So we expect to see 10, 20, 30, 40, and then 10, 10, 10, right? So let me console.log out our set uh, and see what we have. Just clear this out just so we have a bit more space. And I'll run it again. And it looks like nothing really happened, right? So why is this? This is because sets only allow unique values to be added. If we try to add a duplicate value, it's effectively ignored. Okay, we can be guaranteed with sets that duplicates will not show up. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Let me try to do a my set dot add and I'm going to add the string 10 instead of the number 10. I want you th uh, I want you to think about this. Uh, so getting confused with what I'm also logging here. Before I actually run this code, I want you to think, do you think this string 10 will show up in the set or not? All right, let's run this code and see what we get for our third console log. And if you see here, it does actually indeed show up. The size of the set goes up by one to five, and we have 10, 20, 30, 40 as numbers, as well as the string 10. This is because a string 10 is different from the number 10, and they are treated as separate values entirely. Okay, so we can add different value types, primitive types into these sets, and they are treated as unique values themselves as well. If I was to add the string 10 again, uh, it would actually not get re-added and we would only have one 10 in that uh, set. Okay, perfect. The next thing that I wanna see is how do we delete something from this set? Um, that one's pretty easy. We can do my set dot delete, um, surprise, surprise. And here we just give it the value that we want to delete. So let's say I want to delete the number 20 from the set. Then I'm gonna console.log out my set again. We're gonna have quite a lot of logs here, but um, I think it should be okay because these are all on one line. And here you can see that we have uh, 20 in this set right here, and then we delete 20, and then down here we no longer have 20 in the set, and the size also is adjusted to be four. All right. Now, the next important thing that we need to go through is how to test to see if a set has an item inside of it. Um, this is actually one of the main reasons why sets are so useful, um, apart from the fact that they keep track of unique values. This lookup that we're gonna do um, is gonna be extremely fast with a set compared to, um, for example, an array where we had to search through the array one at a time. This becomes very useful for certain types of optimizations, interview questions, um, or algorithmic or data structure questions as well, which we'll get into in future videos. So let's see how this works. If I want to see, I'll do a console log to show this uh, actually be logged out right away. I can ask the question, does my set have, so dot has, and then a value. So for example, does it have the number 30, right? I'm gonna ask the question, does my set have the number 30? So dot has 30. 
So this is going to give us back a Boolean value. And I'm going to immediately log that out. So in this case, you can see if I run this, I get true, right? Which is indeed true, right? We do have the number 30 right here. It's the second item in the set. If I was to ask uh, for, say, the number 300, which is not in the set, and I reran this code, you'll see that we get false for that because it does not contain the number 300. Okay, and the same rules apply here. Um, the, the typing does matter. So if we ask for a number, that's different than asking for a string or a Boolean or things like that. All right, so the next thing that we need to go through with sets is to see how we can get this size value out of them whenever we want. So we can kind of see it being printed out here with node being helpful for us and actually giving it to us in this brackets. But how can we actually print out the size? So I kind of hinted at this earlier in the video when we saw the documentation, I showed uh, if I pull that up again really quick, that we have this instance property uh, of size. So we can actually do a dot size very similar to map and get the number of items inside of that set object. So if I console.log out my set dot size, just like this right here, I should get four printed out because that is the number of objects left in the set after I did this delete operation after all of these add operations. So if I run this code, you'll see that indeed we just get the value four out. There are many reasons why we'd need to use this. Uh, we'll get into some exercises as well to see how this might be used. Um, the, the last thing kind of I do want to point out um, is that there are these extra methods, um, notably things like values, entries, and keys. We saw with maps that um, we would eventually need to learn a new construct called a for of loop, uh, which I also hinted at that is going to allow us to kind of loop through all of the values, very similar to how we loop through an array. And the same is true for sets. Um, we can't really use a regular for loop to do this. Uh, this works with a special type of loop called a for of loop. Uh, because it's a special type of object called an iterable, which we'll get into in future videos as well. So to kind of wrap this video off, though, I would like to kind of just go into why I even wanted to bring up this set. So what was the purpose of kind of even introducing maps and sets in the first place before we get to more advanced topics? It turns out that if you are able to have this object as well as maps, and arrays and objects themselves inside of your repertoire of data structures, um, the amount of problems that you can solve and questions that you can ask to think the logic through for um, increases dramatically. If you were, for example, tasked with even just creating a unique list of items, it would take a while to do with arrays, although it would definitely be possible. There are cases where it would take so long to do that with an array, it might be quite challenging. Um, and if you have these extra structures like sets and maps, it becomes much, much easier and much, much faster to do a lot of very, very common operations. Does this mean that we need to use this for everything? No, right? Um, we definitely are having uh, use cases where this is going to come up and it might be pretty obvious where those will come up. And as we start working on projects together, uh, we'll see that uh, pretty obviously, um, and I'll point them out for sure. However, having more than just arrays and objects where we can expand into maps and sets really increases the kind of breadth of problems that we can solve. And these are kind of very fundamental data structures that are gonna stay with us throughout our software engineering or web development or JavaScript careers. Every single language has their own versions of these, um, and they just maybe have slightly different names, but they all work the same way. They usually perform the same way, and they have the same kind of operations and uses for their respective kind of problem solving abilities. All right. So if you found this video valuable, I would love it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. Um, as well, let me know in the comments if uh, you found this interesting uh, or if you came up with any kind of uh, errors as you were trying to run this or you had any other questions about sets. What we're going to do is uh, in the next video, get a bit more hands-on practice with sets where we're going to go through a bunch of exercises together 
once we're done that, uh, I'll create a video on the four of loops, which I've been hinting at and promising, which will allow us to kind of loop through these map and set data structures. Until the exercise video, I'll see you later.